I'm Mike Ward and I want to spend a few minutes just talking to you about the balance sheet, especially as it relates to doing valuations of companies and uh, talking about the difference between the accounting view of a balance sheet and the economic view of a balance sheet. Now you will know that when we teach finance we simplify things quite a bit. We show you, for example, a balance sheet which has got some equity, shareholders funds and some debt, interest bearing stuff and we tell you there are some assets here, some uh, fixed assets and some current assets. These days they call these things non-current assets and sometimes when you look at pictures and, and financial statements you'll find that this is on top and this is below and or sometimes this is on the right and the, and the assets are on the left. All of those things are details. But what we, what we do need to do is we need to assess this a little bit more carefully. And it's, you will very quickly realize that when you start looking at a balance sheet, it's not quite as simple as this. And uh, even when we teach, though, we're not going to go to the full level of complexity. We're going to show you actually, well, maybe there are different kinds of shareholder funds. And on the liability side of the balance sheet, they're gonna, it's not just debt. There's things like accounts payable, what you owe your suppliers. There may be deferred tax, there may be pension liability, who knows. And on the, uh, on the asset side of the balance sheet, we're going to give you a little bit more detail as well. We need to do that. But uh, you definitely don't want to go and have a look at what an actual balance sheet looks like. Now, I've picked a really bad one here. This is Embraer. You may know them. They're the Brazilian manufacturer of aircraft. And if you look at their actual balance sheet, and here we're looking at their assets, you're going to see some interesting things that you hadn't thought were there. And you, you may recognize a few things. Here are some accounts receivable, and uh, we've got some finished goods, work in progress. That looks like raw materials, and some of these numbers are, are quite big over here. But what about these short-term securities held to maturity? What are those? Is that really an asset? And if you look at the other side of the balance sheet here, well, you're going to see maybe there's some equity at the bottom, but there's quite a lot of stuff. Maybe here's some loans, but they're in foreign currency. What about leases of those loans? Well, these days there's a whole accounting statement, which has just come out, by the way, called IFRS 16, which requires companies to actually show as debt, as interest bearing, the lease and the asset on the other side of the balance sheet. Many times, especially for aircraft company companies, you wouldn't see those at all. So there's some big numbers here. Suppliers foreign. What is this? Is this is this something we owe them or what is it? Customer advice. We we it gets really complicated quite soon. So you'll forgive us, I think, when we say, mm, don't look at that. We're just going to keep it reasonably simple, at least when we start. But we need some principles to guide us. Why are we doing this? So the accounting balance sheet on this side shows you equity and liabilities. And on this side, total assets. When we move to an economic balance sheet, you're going to see we make some changes. First of all, we call this capital often. And on this side, it's not total assets, it's net. That means something has been subtracted. And if you look carefully here, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract things like accounts payable and maybe deferred tax. And the reason we're doing that is because these things, whilst they are liabilities, are actually free. And uh, we call this, and you'll see we're subtracting these from both sides, which is going to reduce our balance sheet, make it a bit smaller in other words. And on this side here, we have to subtract from both sides. So they've disappeared from this side here, and they're now coming through as minus assets here, or if you like, net assets instead of total assets that we had over here. And we're going to often refer to this as net working capital. Now, if you're just thinking that, well, why do we bother? It's because actually this can be pretty material. Here's Tesco, which, as you know, is a retailer in the UK and we, we're looking at thousands of pounds here. So these are billions of pounds that we're looking at over here. And you can see these are all assets and stuff. You probably recognize some of these things. But when you come down here, you're going to see something called accounts payable. And we want to take this number. And in fact, maybe when we look carefully at some of these other numbers, we're going to see things like deferred taxes over here. 
we're going to sub we want to subtract these from this side and you will observe that 9 billion and maybe even some of this here is quite a big proportion if you look at the total stockholders equity down below here that that's 60 70 percent of their equity so we can't ignore this it can make a very big difference to how we analyze companies and how we treat them especially for valuations uh, in, in certain industries some industries not a big deal but in many it is so we do this because accountants are primarily interested in asking the question is this something that the company owns is it an asset or is it something that they owe is it a liability and that's a very valid starting point for accountants but when we're trying to value companies we're interested in the economic aspects of these things and so we ask different questions we say first of all is this an operating asset or operating liability and does it have a cost so certain things like accounts payable are actually free and so you will see here the accountants will have shown these things here as if they're liabilities but we want to move from this to showing only capital on the side we agree ordinary shareholders expect to return that means it's capital so do preference shareholders so do banks and debt holders but actually people like your suppliers they don't charge you money for lending you for, for giving you credit let's rather put it that way nor does the receiver of revenue charge you for deferred tax which is actually a liability but it's it's free so we subtract those kinds of things from the other side of the balance sheet and we treat them if you like as negative assets we're actually subtracting them from both sides which is what's making the, the balance sheet a little bit smaller and you will hear us talking about this term net working capital and at the top here it's no longer going to be total assets but net assets so it's important that we do that now again when you look at something like this you need some principles some guidelines here as to decide is this really an asset well cash sounds like an asset and these are quite big numbers and they actually get bigger in the next year but what about investments for sale that's a huge number here we're talking about 4.7 billion reals and uh, was this trillion I'm not even sure it's a it's a big number and uh, so we, we're going to be asking ourselves are these required for operating the company and if they're not and quite a lot of these things because it looks like they've got quite a lot of cash here and they, they've got a lot of securities those are financial instruments which they are just trading maybe this is hedging policies they've got against currency risk and so on but we're going to if we're not if we don't think they're operating assets we're going to subtract them out of the balance sheet here and we're simply going to look at what the accountants say these things are worth in the final year and we're going to add them to our valuation at the end so if there's excess cash over what is required for operations you're going to hear us talking about the fact that we might have removed that when we calculate free cash flows and we're going to add it to the value at the end so if there's four billion in uh, in that we're going to say let's just add that to the value of the company at the end based on what the accountants say and similarly down here on the other side of the balance sheet here when we're looking at the liability side here we're going to be asking ourselves well how do we treat these things or do they cost us money that's going to be the principle that we use does a lease actually cost us money I think the answer to that is yes but do payables cost us money no they don't so we're going to subtract them onto the other side now I wish I could make this simpler and easier but actually it is complicated so the, the principle and we're coming back to our simple little balance sheet over here is to ask ourselves does it cost us anything is there an expected return and if there isn't we're just going to subtract it and treat it as if it's a negative balance sheet a, a negative asset rather call it then call this net assets here and our capital is uh, those items on the balance sheet where a return is actually required on this side we're going to ask ourselves is it part of the operations of the business if it's surplus to the operations of the business we might just take it off completely remember what it is do our valuations without it and then add those assets back 
surplus cash is probably the prime example of that. I hope you found that interesting. You might need to watch this a couple of times. Sorry about that.